Next time someone tries to snark you by saying, why don't you just Google that? Show them up by doing this. Hey Google, what's the plot of The Room? Here's the synopsis of The Room. A successful bankers, Tommy Wiseau, fiance, Julia Danielle. Tam Was that so hard to answer? Anyway, you can only do that if you have a Google Assistant enabled smart speaker nearby. Of course, you could do this on your phone, but is that really as fun as asking one of these the meaning of life? I don't think so. If you're buying from Google though, you probably wanna know what the difference is between each model. Well, that's what I'm here to help you with. So let's get started. The first generation Google Home is typically the default choice for those who know they want one of these things in their house. This model is a little over a year old, but it's still a pretty capable speaker. It's easy to clean too, so you can place it near the kitchen if you like, and you can even customize the base to your liking. The only bummer, my friends, is that this does not have an external audio jack, which means you can't hook it up to other speakers in your house. But it does offer Bluetooth, so if someone's in your house and they want to stream some tunes, they can easily do so without downloading the Google Assistant app. If you like something smaller and a bit more discreet, or you just prefer to pay the least amount of money possible to bring one of these things home, the Google Home Mini is a nice little package. Now this one is a smaller speaker than the Google Home, so if playlist playback is your primary concern, maybe you want to think of this one instead. But like the Google Home, it offers Bluetooth connectivity, so anyone in your house can connect to it to play music, whether or not they have Google Assistant installed. There's no audio jack on this one either, but if you're feeling brave... The last of the Google-made Google Home smart speakers is the Google Home Max. This is the one you want if you're an audiophile. It's also a good choice if your dwellings are a small space and you only have so much room for a stereo system. The Google Home Max is actually brand new to the market, but it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, not to mention an aux jack, so that you can actually plug it into a record player if you wanted to. The Home Max also uses something called Smart Sound, which employs machine learning to adjust the equalizer settings around the acoustics in your room. And best of all, the Google Home Max can still answer your questions, shut off the lights, and lock the doors. All things you can do with Google Assistant. Of course, there are a couple of third-party Google Assistant smart speakers that might offer something a Google smart speaker does not. JBL, Sony, and Panasonic are a couple of those brands, just to name a few. Whichever smart speaker you bring home, just remember, they are not a replacement for human interaction. Please leave your house. But I love you. For more information on smart speakers and the Google Assistant, be sure to check out digit.com or subscribe to us here on YouTube. Yay!